this is the UN 75 dialogue. And what is that? The UN 75 dialogue is something that marks the UN's 75th anniversary. They launched these dialogues to create a global conversation that talks about the challenges we face as a community and the ways on how we can build a better future based on the data and the knowledge that we will gather. I will be calling on my fellow Youth Advisory Board members to share something they gathered from their respective sessions so we have an idea of how it went. So let's start with SDG3. One thing that we all agreed upon is the importance of having data and having enough data collection. There are many resources that the UN provides and capacity building initiatives. However, they need to be adapted to both low and high middle income countries when it comes to the languages, as well as increasing accessibility to these resources and to these opportunities that the UN provides because there are many countries that are unaware of. Really, really inspiring. So I think we should continue with SDG 4. The, the biggest hindrance that they find towards achieving road safety in goals is a lack of political commitment really, from central and federal governments. They want to see more youth, more young people making decisions, asking youth for their opinions, their inputs before making any decisions. This will be really helpful for what we want to achieve. So thank you for that. So let's move on to SDG number 10. Despite the disparities in the countries of origin, most of the voices are speaking the same thing. When it comes to the biggest hindrances in lack of government commitment, they feel like the respective governments are not committed to road safety. And the other issue which came up on uh, information, which is key to mention, is that there is a feeling or there is a reality that uh, road safety information is not updated. So we need to find a way on how we make road safety interesting for young people. Okay, that's awesome. A lot of interesting stuff in there. So moving on, I'm calling on Grace for SDG 11, uh, Sustainable Cities. One of the really key themes about what we talked about was there's definitely a need for change in one of the most important issues which our group spoke about, which was the lack of government commitment and willingness to engage with road safety. Often they find that there needs to be pressure put on the government first and they would otherwise prefer to spend their money on something else. Um, there's also need to be a change within governments to make sure that there's a multidisciplined approach to road safety and sustainable cities where health departments work side by side with road safety agencies because they're working towards some common goals. I think it's really interesting how the conversation went from your end because it's talking about road safety from the city's perspective. Finally, we have Climate Action SDG 13. So regarding what the group wants to see by 2045, that is to see increased number of uh, electric scooters, cycles, basically cleaner transport mechanisms, uh, more investment in electric cars, which are energy efficient. And also for that to be successful, there is a need to increase their cost. There are a lot of uh, challenges regarding this, but this is not an option it has to happen. There is a need to meaningfully engage uh, young people. But before that, we need to first provide education to tell young people as to how to act and work towards a more sustainable uh, world, more climate resilient world as well. 2020 must be the year when we all come together to discuss how we can work together. We are youth voices gathered in one place and we are saying the same thing. Enough is enough. 